I've been wanting to do this video for a very long time talking about the Iranian national team and I feel going into this match against Japan, this is the right time to talk about these various things that have been just going through my mind, especially before this huge quarterfinal clash against Japan. And this is basically my message to the Iranian national team through my perspective. And it might be the same perspective that many other fans of this national team, of these players have for Iran. This video will be fairly unedited with my emotions and thoughts for Team Melly and my message to this national team. This is where I truly think the Asian Cup begins for the Iranian national team. All these previous matches in the group stages, the round of 16 match against Syria, just weren't what really mattered in my opinion. This is where the Asian Cup begins for this national team because all those previous matches are all matches that this past 10 years that this Iranian national team have been working towards. These are matches that Iran should be winning and advancing in and this match against Japan is what we've worked so hard for in the past nine to ten years that Carlos Kirosh has built since that debacle of failing to qualify for the 2010 World Cup. This is the moments that this national team have worked for and strive for to be successful in being the top dogs in Asian football, competing in World Cups, in latter stages in Asian Cups, winning continental trophies. This generation has been plucking away at it since the early 2012-13s when Carlos Kirosh came around. It's been 10 years, and this is kind of like the last hurrah, the last chance for this team because realistically, most of these guys are really really old they're at the peak of their powers I mean peak of their powers I'd say with the likes of Mekdi Taremi, Salman Kodus, Jahan Bash, whoever X, Y, and Z this is the time and moment for this group of players it begins here in my opinion this is where the tournament truly begins for Iran before this honestly it's all blank to me it doesn't it doesn't matter because this is what you've worked so hard for, this is what fans are wanting from this team. This is the expectation that I'm assuming not even just the fans, but the players have to go on now, be clutch. I mean, we just saw South Korea have such a clutch match against Australia in the quarterfinals. Those are the type of performances this team should be striving for and that this team needs to be having because we realistically haven't seen that from the Iranian national team. Yeah, there's been glimmers and small moments in World Cup qualifying in some of the matches in, in the World Cup group stage, but in Asian Cups, we haven't truly been any exceptional team. I mean, in the previous one, we faced off against Japan in the semifinals. We hadn't conceded a goal up to that point, and we got absolutely mollywopped in that match. This is the moment after all these mistakes, after all the trauma, the, the moments of sorrow and, you know, failing. This is where the national team needs to dig deep and be like, we're not going to fail anymore. This is the pinnacle of these players' talents, of this group of players. Either way of Galanui being a, a good or bad coach. I mean, you could see it with South Korea. That is their golden generation. It doesn't matter if Jurgen Klinsmann is a good or bad coach and if the fans like him or don't like him or don't rate him. And, and in my opinion, Klinsmann isn't a good coach for this national team. But either way, they're digging deep against a top national team like Australia and dragging them themselves out of that match even when things just it seemed like it, they weren't gonna be able to win that game but they dug deep and were clutch with a late goal a goal in extra time to get themselves to a semi-final and possibly final of the asian cup that is what i want to see from iran this is the moment this is the do or die moment to finally you know let's stop like having this cheap talk saying we have all these talented players of mehdi Taremi, sardar Azmoun, ali reza jambash saman qudus said as a tolahi let's actually put pen on paper and actually do it for the national team finally have a moment where these guys beat the likes of japan a national team that is Probably the the standard that the national team when people think of Asian football they think of Japan and or maybe South Korea but they don't think about Iran and we could finally make a statement and be like yeah we can beat Japan we know they're a team that always troubles all the top nations in the world but you know what we can go toe to toe against them and we can finally beat them in a competition that truly matters I mean Iran has never beaten Japan in the Asian Cup and what's so interesting going into this match is there's been six wins for Iran six wins for Japan and six draws this is the the penultimate match where whoever wins this game because there has to be a winner will be the one to have the better all-time record against the other nation obviously over time it'll keep swaying back and forth but this is it's truly just like a a storybook moment for this 
team. And as I mentioned with Amir Alanoui, you know, many fans might like him, might not like him. I think a majority of fans don't really rate him. And I don't really want a lot of the comments to be talking about Carlos Kirosh because that's not the topic at hand. Carlos Kirosh is long and done. His cycle is long gone. He built a great foundation. I think all Iranians can appreciate that and really push some of these players. But for Amir Alanoui, he's at, I believe at this point, going to be Iran's coach till the 2026 World Cup, which I personally don't agree with. Some fans might agree with. I just don't think he's up to that standard for this team. I personally would just like him as a caretaker coach till we're able to find an adequate manager. Maybe it'd be like a, a Herbert Renard. I mean, I saw some rumor that he might take over an African nation midway through Afghan or something like that. You know, just a that type of manager, in my opinion, is what Iran needs going into a 2026 World Cup. Unless, I will say, Kailanoi proves us all wrong and wins an Asian Cup. Him making it this far is basically what he did when he was the previous coach back in, I believe, 07. I mean, he made it to a quarterfinals against South Korea and lost on penalties. He's There's no improvement there. I mean, especially since he had a previous stint with this team, there's been so many questions with his, his lineups, his tactics, with his squad selections. And honestly, for me, it, it all doesn't matter unless you actually win a trophy, actually win these big games. And for me, even if he beats the Japan, beats Japan, it doesn't change anything necessarily. He he needs to go on and win the Asian Cup. And at that point, I feel like, okay, he deserves an opportunity to coach this team going into a World Cup cycle. But in my opinion, if he doesn't win an Asian Cup, even if he wins the match against Japan, he has to win this whole tournament to prove to me that he deserves to have that opportunity. If not, I think he should just be a a caretaker coach till you find an adequate manager that could take Iran to the next level. There needs to be a progression for this national team. We cannot deny that. And I'm not going to compare Kailanui to Carlos Kiraj. I'm just comparing him to the here and now with his decision makings, with what the standard is now set for this national team. There's now a standard because pre-Carlos Kiraj, we didn't qualify for World Cups. He got us back to consistently qualifying. Now we're at a point where we need to now be progressing in being finalists at Asian Cups, actually making out of group stages of World Cups. Like that is progression. That is the reality with this national team. I don't think Galinui could do it. I could be wrong with that. And it, But it starts, the reality is it starts here. The pressure is on him that he has to go on and win this Asian Cup. I don't think even if he doesn't win this, he won't be the coach for 2026. I think the Federation backs him that he will be that coach for this World Cup cycle. But in my opinion, if he doesn't win this Asian Cup, he he shouldn't be the coach for the next World Cup. I'm, I mean, he's already proven to me in many facets that he shouldn't be with the things I just already previously mentioned. This is the do or die moment for him. And there's another compatriot that goes along with him in this match. And that's Sardar Asmoon. Because in my opinion, Asmoon has been labeled as the Iranian Messi. If you remember his young days at Rostov in Russia and, you know, when he was, you know, a a young player coming up the ranks, you know, he, he was the Iranian Messi and there was all these highlight tapes of him. And I remember when I was in middle school, that was all the talk was about for me. It's like, oh, do you guys know about Sardar Asmoon? I mean, this guy looks crazy good. He looks super talented. He's going to be the next big thing for Iranian football. And I mean, like 10 years later, he's 28 years old. He's he's reaching his peak era and he's just kind of a bench warmer at Roma. He hasn't done anything colossal for this national team. I mean, yeah, he's helped us qualify for World Cups, do well in group stages of Asian Cups, but he's he's never scored a goal in a World Cup. He has never scored a, a big goal for this national team in latter stage matches in Asian Cups. He has just kind of just always ghosted. And in my opinion, with... Mehdi Tonami, who has proven somewhat that he can be clutch, but at the same time be very unclutch in moments like against Portugal, the United States, he's suspended. All the pressure is on Sardar Asmu. Can he redeem himself from that previous Asian Cup semifinal match against Japan and actually, you know, be that big player for Iran in this game? Because we've never seen it. I mean, when's that time going to come? You know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't actually put it, you know, score those goals in big moments. It doesn't matter. And, you know, it's in my opinion, it's this Asian Cup and the next World Cup for Asmoon that it's kind of just, that's it for him because he's gone through two World Cup cycles, hasn't scored a goal, hasn't been clutch for this team. And there were opportunities for him in 2018 and 2022 to be that guy, but he wasn't. And would it be with injury? Would it be with this or that? You know, with many things. Asmoon's time's running out. And I feel like this is a golden opportunity. He's fit. He's played okay. He just can't finish. 
But, I mean, all of that could be erased if he scores in this game, scores a winning goal in this game to send Iran through. For me, this is the do-or-die moment for Asmoon. You know, we can have all the hype, you can have all the talent, but if you're not going to be a clutch player for your national team, you won't be remembered as a legend, will be le remembered as an icon. Yeah, you could always score against the Cambodias or the Bahrains in World Cup qualifying, but... The reality is you need to be a clutch player in the big moments in Asian Cups and World Cups, and he hasn't done that, but he has a huge opportunity in this match because I have a feeling either it's going to just be Asmoon or Ansari fired in Asmoon, but either way, we all know Asmoon's got to be the game changer in this match, and he can, and I, I know he can be that. We've seen it many times. It's just a matter of him actually executing it in a big game, and that's kind of something we have to see, and, you know, and regardless if Iran does win or doesn't win this match i think there's a big you know talking point a big umbrella over this national team and, and from fans that something i alluded to early on in this video is you have to say the time is up for this national team i mean i think most fans agree that after this previous world cup i think it was time for this this cycle of players that it was kind of over like you know your totemis your resions your Jahan Basks, your Baron Vance, like it's time to start giving these younger kids a chance because this team has had its opportunities. Granted, we went with them again. You know, we went with the more experienced group to go on to win this Asian Cup. And as I said, regardless if we win it or don't win it, I still think after this Asian Cup, luckily, I, I still think there's plenty of time that we can start implementing the young kids. And I think fans can agree that it needs to happen. I mean, we saw how talented. Of players we have in Iran. I mean, we saw in that U-17 uh, World Cup how well they played against the likes of Brazil, England. Like, this team has something special, you know? this These young group of players, there is something special. Yeah, we failed to qualify in like U-20s, U-23s, and certain avenues, but there's obviously a good crop of players. Let's not make it go to waste. Let's actually give young players like Hossein Nejad, Saman Fala, Syed Manesh, whoever it may be, you know, start giving them opportunities over these players that reality is they're past it, you know? I'd rather start building for long-term success instead of short-term success because I think that's what will help make this national team grow. We've kind of seen, like, with a lot of these players, there's no more improvement, you know? It's not going to get any better with the likes of many of our defenders, many of our midfielders. Like, the fact that we're calling up guys like Cheshmi and Ebrahimi who have no ceiling and don't really have much to offer for this national team over just giving a guy like Hossein Nejad, who I, I know I'm using him a lot as the example, but... Instead of him give, giving him an opportunity in this tournament, which I think would be, you know, incredibly valuable experience for him. And I mean, like we had a guy, we have a guy like Fala who's with our team right now in this Asian Cup, but hasn't gone any minutes, hasn't been trusted one bit. And I think it's so important, especially with Alanoi, that he starts just giving some kids more opportunities and start that cycle of change from the old to the new because we're not going to have your Taremis, Koduses, Jahambasks forever. At some point, you have to let go of these guys. They aren't going to be our saviors for our national team forever. And that's why I'm saying this was kind of an, a huge talking point for me. Regardless if we win this Asian Cup, don't win this Asian Cup, it has to start now. I felt it should have started after the World Cup. You know, I mean, better to start now than never. After this Asian Cup, this truly has to begin. You have to start playing younger kids. I'm not saying play all young kids completely, but you know, a good healthy mixture of young hungry players that want to progress in their careers with some of those experienced players that they watch right now, like a Tadami who's scoring in the Champions League, Odus who's doing it in the Premier League, have them still sprinkled in for experience, but you got to start playing these younger kids and start pushing these younger kids similarly to maybe what Carlos Kirosh did to go to Europe. Don't stay in Iran. It's okay to, you know, develop in Iran. Maybe be there for a year or two, make a name for yourself, but then go to Europe as soon as possible. There's a reason why Jahan Bash, Azmoun, Kodus, those are players that from the get-go, they didn't play in Iran. They played in Europe as soon as they possibly could. And you can see why there's such a big gulping class, especially when Tadami made the move to Portugal finally. You could see how his, you know, progression just exploded in such, such a short period of time. But that's what I'm just saying. If you get him there young to learn those fundamentals in a, in a European system, it, the world is your oyster. And that's the, the slight problem I have with Galenoi is like he's rewarding players for being good in the 
the PGPL, where we know that's not a league where many great players have developed. Yeah, you have your rare, you know, odd players like Etonami, who, but when he did make the jump from playing in Iran for so long to Europe, you could see how much better he got because Carlos Kiros told him, hey, go to Europe. I think you could do it in Portugal. He pushed him to do it. Reward players that want to push themselves, like similar to a Yadigar Rostami, who at a young age went to Poland. He's taking that risk, you know? I get it. It's comfortable to be in Iran, and this is maybe an issue a lot of Mexico fans see where their top players, you know, scapegoat back to Mexico when the when times get tough in Europe. Iranians should not just scapegoat back to Iran, especially the younger kids that might have potential. Play in Europe as long as you possibly can. Go to Europe as early as you can. These are such important things in my opinion, and this is something that comes down all the way from the youth development coaches all the way to the senior coach to push these players to be like, you guys need to go to Europe. I'm going to reward you with national team calls with more game time as a key player for this team if you guys push yourselves in your career, not being stagnant and being complacent to be a top player in PGPL like Mogalun Asadi, who you guys can see. It's just like such a big drop off in the forwards when they play. You need to start pushing these young players into this team going to Europe at a younger age and just giving more opportunities. And that starts, granted, from the Federation. But the small things like Aranui and other players can do and show, which I think a lot of these players have, like Ajambash, Taremi, Azmun, Kodus, Ezzetulahi, go to Europe. Do not play in Iran. And you can tell how much better our players are as soon as they go to Europe and try to fight for a spot in Europe, not stay in Iran because you shouldn't reward that kind of just pessimistic mindset and just kind of like the comfort zone. You need to push yourself. And I think that's so important for a lot of these players because we have talented players. We do. It might not seem like it, but we, we, we do. We'll always, every country has talent. It's a matter of being able to give as much opportunity to that talent and push those players to know, improve in their careers, to make the bigger jump and not just, you know, be complacent. And that's the big thing. But these are just many things that are on my mind. I mean, don't forget, guys, we will be live for this Japan match. It's going to be at 3.30 in the morning. I'm just basically going to be pulling an all-nighter. There's no reason for me to go to bed anyway. So we will be live for that. And, and I really hope that Iran can, you know, make history. And finally, you know, after all these moments of ups and downs and a lot of just mainly down moments, they can finally give these fans a moment of making it to an Asian Cup final and possibly winning it. But it starts with beating Japan in this quarterfinal match because I think this would be a big turning point, not only for, you know, for the fans, but for this national team to be like, okay, yeah, after all of our hard work this past eight, nine, ten years, that we are a national team that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a Japan who where Kubo is a valued at a 60 million pound player, which is valued more than the whole national team, that we can be underdogs and finally, you know, have a, a great run and bring joy to a lot of these football fans that have, you know, been through, you know, such down times with this national team. Yeah, there were some absolute amazing, unforgettable moments, but, you know, there hasn't been that, you know, true success that we've been wanting to see for this national team that th these group of players and fans deserve. And I hope it can begin in this match against Japan. But boys and girls, you know, I'll see you all in the match against Japan. And I hope you all have a lovely day.